Okay, as I was introduced, I'm Kalle Volkov, I'm from Starship Technologies and uh, the like first part of the day or most part of the day has been really like cloud centric or from the like cloud producers, hardware makers and so on. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the like Starship experience on how we have done stuff, how we, what are the bottlenecks we have seen and, uh, and so on. But first, a little overview about Star the Starship as such. Starship has the vision of, of creating uh, uh, delivered robots, plus mile delivered robots. We have roots in Skype, so the company was founded by uh, Skype co-founders. We are the leader of the emerging industry of ground-based delivered robots, which means that we are the de facto currently like standard, or basically have driven the most with autonomous delivered robots. We are uh, operated as an on-demand delivery service, so we are um, uh, more focused on on-demand than uh, do like scheduled or do you have some kind of like a future uh, aligned deliveries. And we are currently running commercial services with more than 10 partners all around the world, London, Hamburg, Tallinn, Silicon Valley, Washington DC. And uh, the problem that we're trying to solve is one of the like uh, conceptual problems. Uh, these ha there has been like problems to, like this before. For example, in 19th century, the seamless transport of energy was solved. In 20th century, seamless transport of information was solved via phone, via internet, and so on. And this century, we're basically trying to resolve the seamless transport of matter. The uh, problem is fundamental in a, in a sense that uh, e-commerce is growing. It's growing like rapidly. It's growing more than 10% annually. Uh, there are thousands of van, vans which are uh, which are doing the deliveries, um, uh, doing doing grocery deliveries, package deliveries, wasting our uh, our air and, and so on. Uh, the one third of the car journeys or for personal shoppings. So this is like thing to fix. And uh, thousands of tons of CO2 is released. And um, uh, to like when doing those deliveries, this is the major contributor for traffic accidents, for example. Uh, the tech behind the robot. Uh, this is like robot internals. We are using payment as primary road. We are traveling through the payments, uh, crossing the streets only when necessary. We are traveling at pedestrian speed. Uh, we are equipped with lots of sensors. There are like many of them inside. Uh, we do the localization on a two centimeter accuracy. So basically one of the sensors inside the robot is GPS. This gives us a hint on which city we are in or something like this. We can react to pedestrians, even though uh, we have like uh, we don't have lidars and then stuff like this is in. We are monitored by human operators if needed. So if the uh, robot is crying for help or, or something like this, then uh, we have an operator helping. We don't have 100% autonomous robots. We have like up to 99 or a little bit more. The last percent is for the humans. We can carry approximately three grocery bags, which is uh, like 12 kilograms of, of weight inside the robot. And uh, the robot has been uh, designed to be inherently safe, so basically not to do any harm to, to any of the like surrounding animals, people, whatever, cars. Uh, these are a couple of examples of what a robot sees. So we are doing uh, visual localization. We are uh, like detecting lines, building 3D worlds, detecting uh, everything from like stereo vision and, and also singular camera vision. The point cloud is one of the like major contributors for safety. Uh, th this is mainly from the uh, like 2D uh, stereo camera pairs uh, from uh, from different angles, and we're quite quite like able to detect moving uh, objects, moving obstacles, uh, anything that comes in between of the robot and the road the robot is driving. Uh, the robot is equipped with uh, quite a heavy model from deep uh, learning neural networks. So we are training the robot constantly uh, to, to be able to detect the cars and stuff. And we do have quite a lot of like augmented reality also for the operators. So the operators, if they are called in, they can see quite well what's surrounding it, what are the road conditions, what are the like situations at the moment and so on. 
No, for the cloud. I mean, the robot is a, like a really neat piece of machinery. It's a, like a server on the wheels, uh, but uh, to like, have the possibility of, uh, of orchestrating it, to guide it, and so on, we need quite a lot of cloud services. The uh, services setup is something that you can see from the screen. Pardon my lack of design, but this is like a function graph. In the sense that we have robots all around the world. We have a uh, few uh, operator sites. So we have like one in the US East, one in the US West. Uh, the robots are mainly driving currently in the US West and the US West. And everything is connected via the internet. So we are pretty uh, heavily relying on the uh, like data center topology and uh, and of the like uh, different uh, parts of the of the routes. So this is just a like basic image of what there is. Uh, deployment um, of the cloud services. Uh, we have chosen currently a way of not deploying services but deploying servers. This is like a major shift. I mean, uh, the similar concept is with the Docker. So that you are deploying some kind of like a uh, containers, some kind of services, individual services into the cloud. But we have decided to deploy whole, whole nodes instead of uh, Docker images uh, for uh, for uh, the like simplicity of it. So if we release a new software, we're doing it each day. Then we are uh, basically building our new version of the software, installing it to the base image, deploying the servers, removing the old servers. The main benefit of it is that we are able to keep our base image up to date. The, if we have like a, some kind of operating system inside the container or something, then this can become vulnerable and, uh, and so on. But if we are like constantly building new servers, applying latest security patches and so on, then we feel a little bit more safer in the interval. <laughs> we are pretty AWS, um, like, uh, not really like totally locked in, but we like them because they have like a huge amount of uh, of services which they're providing. There are too many; it's a pain to keep up. But uh, they are covering uh, like 95 percent or 98 percent of the use cases needed for the world. For us, it covers almost everything. We are using Terraform to deploy. As I mentioned, AWS is a little bit painful. It has lots of services, and then when you want to like orchestrate everything perfectly, then you need some kind of tool. <coughs> Terraform is one of the best solutions in the out there. Uh, we haven't found anything else. If you have something, welcome for hints. If you know some kind of nice UI for it, ready for hints. But uh, this uh, gives us the ability of, of deploying like hundreds of services within a couple of minutes. And, uh, and also running back and doing uh, other kind of neat things and uh, also uh, combining all the services with each other and so on. So using good continuous integration, this is something that is like really, really handy. Uh, quick detection is the, uh, is the key value for us uh, in a sense the, or core value because it, uh, we believe in rapid development or lean development. And we're de as I mentioned, we're deploying daily. And of course, there are always errors. So if you don't have like a proper QA, big pipelines and so on and so on, then uh, mistakes come handy. And uh, we really want to know if there is a problem and we want to roll back fast. So we are trying to achieve uh, like a 60 second detection, 60 second rollback scenario. If we detect that something is wrong, then I should first ask questions later. But uh, this, uh, this is something that, uh, that we're aiming for or what we're designed for. And uh, thanks to this, we have peak utilization of three times the normal uh, because we are like building new servers, deploying them, and so on. So, considering doing this on bare metal, this is like doesn't make sense at all. Uh, we are ramping up with lambdas. This is like a really good thing. It's probably the best thing since the sliced bread, but uh, but we're just like learning on how to most effectively use this, and also API gateways, which is like directly or loosely connected to this. Uh, Docker is something we tried in the beginning. Uh, it was a little bit like immature at that time. Also, our application was a little bit like too complicated for back then uh, for the technology to orchestrate properly. But we are uh, moving a little bit towards that probably next year. So basically, we're trying with microservices, we're trying with uh, in like combination with lambdas and so on to have 
maybe maybe some kind of photography. <coughs> uh, data. Data is something that is uh, always a little bit hard thing, especially if you have robots. Uh, we are constantly transferring data from the robots. The, uh, as I mentioned before, our robots are not 100% autonomous, they're 99 point something autonomous, which means that we always must know where they are, what they are doing, how they are doing, and so on. And we want to do it as quickly as possible. So we are sending time critical telemetry uh, from the robots to the servers. We're sending uh, low resolution obfuscated video feed. Uh, if there is operator watching, uh, we are sending localization data, obstacle information, service level aggregation, and so on. But also the uh, robot sometimes like ask for help or cries for help. I want to cross the road, but it's a little bit like an unknown situation for me. Maybe you can help. So there is an operator coming in and so on. But uh, this is something we must do really eff efficiently in the sense that uh, standing robot is a bad robot, driving robot is a good robot. So, so this is something that is like urgently needed for the operator. And one thing that we have learned is that sometimes transferring data with truck is much, much like faster than doing it over the internet. Because if we want to transfer, for example, I don't know, some terabytes of data from one coast to another, and using uh, the like available internet connections or broadband connection in the West Coast, then we just can't do it. I mean, it's much, much easier to buy a couple of hard disks and fly them over. <coughs> because the internet connectivity, especially in the US, is not very good. Uh, when it comes to storing data, um, we are trying to store as much data as possible. So the robots are uh, saving all of their like um, tabular or numerical telemetry into like structured files. Uh, there are like all of the sensor, all of the raw data, some of the data comes like 100 hertz or something uh, from, from the sensor and this is everything that is stored. Uh, we are saving uh, visual data uh, for training and, and, uh, and other purposes uh, and, uh, and some visual telemetry and stuff. We are using uh, Spectix. Spectix is a really cool tool, consider this as an advertisement. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is something we can use to analyze like lots of lots of log data and, uh, and other kind of structured or semi-structured data. Uh, it takes like seconds to process some um, tens or, or hundreds of terabytes of data. It's, uh, and um, and other other such tools. So also for data warehouse, uh, we want our developers to access as much data as possible. And we want it to be as structured as possible. So we're using Athena Spark. Uh, EVS Blue and, and Redshift, and then organizing all of the data into into the databases so it's easily accessible. And uh, thanks to the before mentioned uh, telemetry, uh, which is saved into the robots, like all of the raw data, we have possibility of reprocessing, replaying situation. We can uh, like visualize everything that the robot has seen and then to replay the situation to improve the algorithms and understand like what's going on or how to use it. But uh, this results in uh, like a, quite a huge amount of data. Uh, and we are like very uh, heavily using also offline compute for different kind of purposes. So online compute is in robot, we're transferring the data and then we need to like understand what has been going on and then and how how we can benefit from the data saved or how we can benefit from the hundreds of thousand kilometers we have been driving with the robot. And uh, we have like testing frameworks. Uh, we are nightly uh, evaluating our new algorithms or algorithm change to understand based on annotations that uh, how we are performing compared to like yesterday or, or day before, or week before, or year before. And for that, each night we're processing uh, more than 100 terabytes of data uh, from the cloud, mostly like uh, video or raw, raw video data and raw telemetry data. And uh, we are shooting up uh, clusters of GPU uh, computers from AWS. And with uh, like a couple of hours, we are able to go over all of the data that we have and, and to have the results by the morning, which tells us, yes, the developers have done a good job again, and we are safe to move on the streets again. Uh, data warehousing, synchronization, normalization, these are the processes that we run also nightly. 
Uh, we're processing like tens of terabytes each night again for the developers to be uh, able to to run uh, their queries against the the data amount and stuff. And uh, all of this available via SQL interface. So it's uh, uh, like becoming a standard that you have unstructured data or or some like table of data, and then you put it somewhere, and magic happens, and then there's like queryable data. Uh, with the cloud, one of the like tough thing is maintenance. Uh, if you have your black like, own servers in the corner, then you like know what you have and how many you have and so on. In the cloud, it's like pretty easy that you forget something running and so on. But uh, we are uh, uh, trying to use as much as possible all of the like, automation thing, auto scaling, elastic things. So basically, uh, using as much as out of the box solutions as possible, and also Terraform is quite good in reporting all of the like yeah, forgotten assets and and removed assets and so on. Um, and uh, monitoring uh, in the cloud, you need to like really really monitor things because there are like issues coming around sometimes, like network not performing or disk not performing or something like this. Somebody is using like shared resources unwisely. And uh, and you need to be like ready that uh, your instance dies or something goes bad, and for that monitoring is like really really like needed stuff. And you cannot use the cloud provider monitoring for that. that makes sense. And uh, Chaos Monkey, uh, it's the like one of the greatest inventions in the sense that uh, you should always be ready for disasters. And if you cause the disasters yourself then uh, it's like less possible that the disaster will strike you when you least expect it. If you constantly have some kind of like possibilities <coughs> of dropping the databases or by losing the instances, losing the databases, losing uh, application servers, losing some kind of aggregations, losing some kind of pipelines, then you are ready for it. And then you know that if it happens for real, if it's not like some script which is in your domain that does it, then you're ready to recover it. And uh, learning from each incident, this is uh, uh, this is this is like really written in our DNA. Is to to like uh, if it's a cloud thing, if it's a code thing, whatever it is, we need to learn from it. We need to write it down. We need to do post mortem. We need to like monitor it and be ready for next time. Uh, networking. Uh, clouds are are like. Good thing, but the networking between them, this is a little bit of pain. And also for the robot, when it comes, robot is moving piece, and then robot uh, needs to be always connected, and it needs to be like really well connected. Uh, then we have done a lot of work on this, either interconnecting all of the like data centers, interconnecting in cloud, or interconnecting the robots to the data sets, and so on. So the Learning the things hard way, we have now like more than one mobile carrier in each robot, so separate carriers. Uh, we are using different kind of antenna, different kind of ports, and so on, to have like a full run system. Uh, if one fails, then second works. If second fails, then either third works or nothing works, and uh, then this is a pain. We need to bring the pop close. Uh, this is something that has been discussed today already a lot, in the sense that uh, we need to have some kind of like gauge. Uh, facilities and that stuff like this, so basically bringing everything as close as possible to the, to the robot. And we need to be like a cloud provider agnostic in there to, to have the like best uh, possible solution. Um, VPC uh, or VPN across data centers because VPC has still limitations, for especially in Amazon case, we are like able to commit the VPCs, but not the pair, for example, different data centers and so on, but we need to have a secure connection. So creating this uh, like VPN pool type mesh is something that is like a considerable effort. But I hope that at some point of time, the uh, cloud, provider, cloud providers understand that having a, like a secure connection between all of the sites is also like a thing to consider. <coughs> uh, also, the like services distribution 
in the sense that if you have a distributed service then you and you have a single database or like one location database then uh, organizing all of this is uh, like a thing thing to consider that always move your stuff closer to the database you must provide some kind of apis you optimize them you parallelize them and uh, so on uh, the measuring thing, this is something that there is never enough. I mean, you need to measure all of the API response time, you need to uh, measure all of the like server availabilities and so on and so on and so on. So measuring is one of the like key points everywhere to understand or to learn. Uh, latency. Now, as in the first slide I displayed, we have um, robots roaming around many, in many places, we have operators in many places, and we need to be able to uh, to like drive the robots. And uh, this means that uh, uh, operators must have like a decent video image of it. And uh, if the video is more than 500 milliseconds late, then they become a little bit like annoyed or they don't understand what's going on and they can't react in time so basically when you're giving an order that yes it's safe to cross the road for the robot and you have image which is like one second late or one and a half second late which means that the car has been driven already like uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 meters for example uh, then uh, it can cause an accident so this is something we're like practical we um, uh, we or like uh, trying to optimize it bit by bit, in the sense that, for example, uh, if we take images, we have a global set of cameras. This means that it takes 150 milliseconds to get the picture into the network as such, uh, before it's like compressed and, and analyzed and, and, and so on. Uh, then uh, the robot is moving constantly, which means that the network quality changes. So it takes like 40 to 200 milliseconds to get the to get the video off, uh, or image from the robot into the servers, and then uh, like there are different additional things. So the uh, 500 milliseconds is uh, like a real tough thing to achieve, but we can either use black magic or uh, network connectivity uh, like improvements to fix this issue. So the one of the like uh, nice things is the random parallel connection thing. Uh, which is mentioned in here. In the robots we are using, uh, as I mentioned already, uh, many separate providers, usually two, in worst case three, and we are constantly measuring the latency of each of the connect connections. So this is uh, something that uh, is like, uh, w which is done in uh, like production offices or for office connections and so on, so you have redundant connections, which over if the connection is bad or something like this. The main difference is we are doing it like 10 times a second. So we're constantly measuring, constantly switching. We're able to switch like multiple times in a second uh, to a better connection. And if the robot moves, for example, one second, 1.5 meters, then uh, then we are able to like switch a couple of times to provide it because of the, like, for example, cell handover and, and stuff like this. Uh, some of the lessons uh, from the uh, from deploying or basically creating the system within the last like some years. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned, VPC is not a silver bullet. This is uh, Amazon uh, usually like says that you want to be secure, you use VPC, everything is perfect, and so on. And if you start like uh, pairing all of the system or doing any other kind of like. Uh, Connectivity magic. Then you understand that it hits really, really hits the um, uh, the like, or like you can basically transparently uh, or like accidentally uh, create a, like a security breach or something like this because the connectivity between data centers is not secure uh, and it's not like seen outside, so you can easily make that mistake. Uh, the connection dropping or network uh, hopping between the data centers of availability zones uh, and even hosts inside the same availability zone, this is something that, um, that, that there are like micro drops or even major drops and you need to be ready for it. I mean, if it usually if you deploy in the same data center then it can be like quite short but everything works usually normally but uh, this is not the normality. Uh, deployment. 
um, it's uh, something that needs to be like architected into the DNA of the application. So basically, how you create the application, how you like design the the accessing of the stuff. So for example, if we started uh, to like test or or have the first uh, robots out in the streets, then we were like not in the beginning thinking through that yes these robots will drive in US for example and, and we need to have like interconnected ability or, or the, the interconnection between the uh, different uh, continents and so on. So this is something that, that needs to be designed early, really really early on, early on when you like uh, before you start team testing or, or when you start, uh, start testing on a larger scale. And, uh, this is um, like something I have mentioned between mini slides already, that measure, measure, measure. And this means that the only place where not to save money is time series database. So you put everything there, you can get it out, you can aggregate, you can make analysis based on it and so on. So so this is, uh, this is to consider. And logic is the same thing. You need to centralize, you need to make them available. This is again a little bit painful when you consider lambdas, for example, that don't like want to log very well into your like proprietary systems, but uh, but this needs to be overridden because you need to have logs and telemetry data. And uh, if you need like really low latency across data center traffic, then uh, there hasn't there are no out of box solutions. At least we haven't found any of them. Uh, everybody has their like limitations and, and stuff, and you need to like develop a lot and lots of your own stuff. And that's it from my side. Thank you.